just when you thought you could turn your back and walk away. The dark cloud of human indignity follows you. You have no choice but to turn and look it in the eye. It's the sex offender hit list. Yi Yao waves to his wife as he enters a Wake County courtroom facing 15 counts of second degree sex exploitation of a minor. Second degree exploitation of a child involves the distribution of child pornography. The state says Yao, a Chinese nationalist, was using the website BitTorrent to download child sex abuse material and share it from his home in Durham. In many of those images, children under the age of seven. On April 4th, 2023, Homeland Security Investigation, Duke University Police Department and the Cary Police Department executed a federal search warrant. The state says the Duke employee confessed yesterday to the crimes they say took place between August of last year and February of this year before being jailed on an $8 million bond. Detectives were able to download child sex abuse material from the defendant on numerous different dates. Each of the 15 counts carries prison time of 88 months if convicted due to the severe nature of those crimes. I think our law takes into account the fact that a child had to be sexually assaulted in all of those ways for these images to even exist. Yao is actually banned from Duke University according to the courts. Now, if he were to bond out, he would be on electronic monitoring and have to surrender his passport. Chelsea Donovan, WRL News, Raleigh. A cheerleading coach accused of inappropriately touching children, and tonight police say there could be other victims. The coach and teacher is facing molestation charges. Police say he is the co-owner of Rush All-Stars in Claremont. News 6's Amanda Castro is at that gym with where the investigation stands tonight. Police say so far three victims have come forward alleging that their coach inappropriately touched them inside this gym and investigators worry there could be more. We watched as someone associated with the World Cheer Center placed these no trespassing signs in front of the building. This is where Claremont police say 39 year old Vigilinda Haiti, the co-owner of the facility and head coach of the Rush All Stars inappropriately touched children. It's been an ongoing investigation over the last four months. Um, the detectives have worked very diligently on this. Investigators say the first victim came forward in January. Police say their investigation prompted the U.S. All-Star Federation, which credentials coaches, to suspend to Haiti, and he wasn't allowed to work at the gym. Then detectives say two more victims came forward. Police say at the time of the incidents, the victims were 14 and 15 years old. The allegations dating as far back as 2013 and as recent as last year. Police worry there could be more. He's working with children for many, many years, so we are unsure at this time. Investigators say to Haiti worked at other gyms across Central Florida, and he teaches at Cypress Creek High School in Orange County. The school district tells us to Haiti was placed on leave in January, and they're investigating. Police urging parents to talk to their children and say something if something feels wrong. You do trust those individuals that you're leaving your children with because they're that's what they're doing. They're coaching children. Um, just be mindful of their surroundings. Have the kids talk to your kids. You know, if something doesn't feel right, it doesn't seem right. It's probably not. So just make sure that you're talking to your kids. Dehaiti was arrested on Sunday and has since been released from jail. We tried calling him and the gym, but we haven't heard back. Reporting in Claremont, Amanda Castro getting results, New 6. Police arrested two Baltimore City men for possession of child sexual abuse materials, according to the Maryland State Police. The first suspect is this bald-headed chomo here. That's Robert M. Shearer, a 41-year-old of Baltimore. Shearer is charged with five counts of possession of child sexual abuse materials. And our second chomo is Robert W. Books, a 54-year-old of Baltimore. Books is charged with three counts of that material. Uh, both men were transported to the Baltimore City Detention Center for processing while awaiting the initial appearance. So beginning in March of this year, the Maryland State Police Computer Crimes Unit 
initiated an investigation into the possession of online child sexual abuse material. And on Wednesday, the Maryland State Police, with assistance from the Homeland Security Investigations and the Baltimore Police Department, served a search warrant at the identified residence of the suspects. Shearer and Books were arrested at the scene, and a preliminary forensic review of the suspects' electronic devices revealed multiple images of child sexual abuse material. See you later, chomos! Chester, Illinois man faces multiple counts of possessing child pornography. Criminal investigators with the Illinois State Police arrested 33-year-old Brian Fricky on 12 felony counts. The case against Fricky began back in February and led to a search warrant last week that resulted in his arrest. He is being held in the Randolph County Jail. New tonight, a 49-year-old Marquette man and a 31-year-old Grand Rapids man have been arrested for child sex crimes. The Alger County Sheriff's Office said it arrested David Derwin of Marquette and Manuel Uribe Mendez of Grand Rapids in February for engaging in child sexually abusive activity and using a computer to commit a crime. The Sheriff's Office says they traveled to Alger County after they communicated with an officer posing as a 15-year-old and saying they wanted to have sex sexual intercourse. Derwin and Uribe Mendez are lodged at the Alger County Jail for their preliminary exam in 93rd District Court. A tip from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children caused an investigation by Cisco police and agents from Texas Department of Public Safety, which has resulted in the arrest of a Cisco resident. Killian Devin Salter, 33-year-old, was taken into custody on Wednesday, April 10th, after a warrant was issued charging him with possession of child sexual abuse materials. This is an ongoing investigation and additional charges are expected to be filed as it progresses. Salter here is housed in the Eastland County Jail with a $30,000 bond. That is, man, that's insane. That means he can drop three grand to a bondsman and he's walking. The Cisco Police Lieutenant Lloyd Fagan led the investigation and Officer Samuel Munoz and the Texas DPS agents served the warrant for this chomo. I hope he don't get out. Former Chicago Public School student is suing the district. She claims that the district didn't protect her against a former dean of students. Brian Crowder was charged with felony criminal sexual assault in 2022. Jessica D'Onofrio was live downtown with what that woman is saying, Jess. Tanya and Terrell, the former student, says she wanted to share her story so that something like this doesn't happen to anyone again. Now, she spoke at a news conference downtown this morning with her attorneys who just filed a lawsuit against Chicago Public Schools. We are protecting her identity since she's a victim of alleged sexual assault. The lawsuit claims that CPS negligently hired, supervised, and retained a former dean of students who allegedly raped her, failing to protect the then 15-year-old student after they allegedly learned of the abuse. Now, the former dean at Little Village Lawndale High School, Brian Crowder, is facing criminal charges. The student, who is now 25 years old, claims she was sexually abused by by Crowder from 2013 to 2016. This morning, she spoke through tears. It's a lot of emotions, for sure. Um, a lot of anger, sadness. Um, I just, I was just scared and ashamed and embarrassed. The lawsuit also alleges that Crowder groomed and repeatedly assaulted her, subjecting her to two pregnancies and abortions while she was a student. The suit claims the student reported the abuse to a teacher who is required by law to report it, but the teacher allegedly did nothing. Every single teacher, administrator, principal, coach who doesn't report abuse must face consequences. Okay. Rules will not be enforced unless there's a consequence. CPS releasing a statement this morning saying in part that student safety is a top priority and that they don't comment on pending litigation. Watch breaking news on YouTube. Subscribe to ABC7 Chicago Eyewitness News. The owner of a Middle Tennessee theater school has been arrested, accused of sexually abusing a child. 60-year-old Gary Schlemmer was indicted for aggravated sexual battery following an incident at H.G. Hill Middle School. 
Well, he's accused of grabbing a female student's chest while alone in the classroom with her. The school reported the accusations to police to investigate. And prior to the report, Schlemmer was not rehired for the 2022 school year. Jail records show he's being held on a $100,000 bond. A long lot man was charged with possessing child sexual exploitation material on Tuesday. 44 year old Stevie Brown was charged with 10 counts of sexual exploitation of a child. One count of habitual sex offender against children, which is a sentence enhancer, and two counts of failure to register as a sex offender. Brown was arrested on April 4th after a year of evading arrest, and he was located by the Grand Junction Police Department at a homeless shelter. A search warrant was executed on February 8th of last year at the residence in the 1700 block of Whitehall Drive, where two residents were found inside the named owner of the IP address, and Brown. Both are registered sex offenders and said they'd met during their probation. How nice, a couple sex offenders getting together to share some materials, right? Well, many electronic devices were seized as evidence, including a Dell Inspiration laptop, according to the affidavit. Forensic analysis of the laptop found more than 1,400 images and videos containing child sexual exploitation material. User accounts and pictures found on the device indicated Brown. This chomo here was the laptop's user. Brown is set for a preliminary hearing on April 29th in Boulder County Court. See ya, chomo. A former Metairie deacon convicted of sex abuse against a child has died at the age of 63. The Jefferson Parish Coroner confirms the death of Virgil Wheeler III today. The St. Francis Xavier Church Deacon was arrested in 2021 when a victim came forward alleging sexual abuse between 2000 and 2002. He pled guilty to indecent behavior after his charges were reduced from sexual battery. This is just the latest twist in a saga that began with an investigation into child sexual abuse. Our NBC 10's Darren Batella walks us through this story that really just keeps getting wilder by the day. This is video posted by a Russian TV network appearing to show former Holyoke City Councilor and member of the Massachusetts Air National Guard, Wilmer Pueomota, signing a military contract in Russia to fight against Ukraine. Friends tell us this looks and sounds like Pueomota, who went missing while facing charges tied to child sex abuse images. It's a difficult situation. We spoke with one of his close friends and a former colleague on the Holyoke City Council. Pueomota's term just expired this past December. He, he was like a younger brother to me. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I would say we were pretty close. I, uh, I thought the world of him. Counselor David Bartley wouldn't tell us the last time he spoke with Pueomota. I'm not going to comment on that. Pueo Mota went missing after he failed to appear in court in Rhode Island several months ago. Whatever caused Will to go to uh, Russia is certainly originated in Rhode Island. The Rhode Island Attorney General's office stating in a recent court filing, quote, while the state cannot verify the authenticity of the videos and photographs, if they are accurate, the defendant is well beyond the jurisdiction of this court. And if false, the defendant is engaged in an elaborate ruse to conceal his whereabouts. We reached out to an attorney representing Cueo Mota on Wednesday morning, but never heard back. Darren Batella reporting for NBC10 Boston. Let's head over to North Carolina. Pender County Sheriff's Office detectives arrested 35-year-old Gregory Allen Brown from Hampstead on child sex crime charges on Wednesday the 10th. He was charged with indecent liberties with a child, solicitation of a child by a computer, disseminating obscenity and 20 counts of second-degree sexual exploitation of minors. Second-degree sexual exploitation of a minor refers to the selling, sending, soliciting, and exhibiting of child sexual abuse material per state law. Detectives with the Special Victims Unit received information alleging that Brown had been contacting a child out of state and had been sending inappropriate messages. Evidence gathered so far has shown that Brown had been in contact with minors across multiple states. He was given a $500,000 secured bond. See ya, chomo. 
The Sangamon County Sheriff's Office says a California man has been arrested after traveling to Springfield to meet a minor for sexual acts. They say the investigation began back in September of 2022 when they were notified a man was talking online with a child. Officials say he distributed nude images of the child on social media. Detectives identified the suspect as 24-year-old Matthew Rodriguez. Officials say after an extensive investigation, the case was transferred to Homeland Security investigations as it's a federal offense to cross state lines to meet a minor. Rodriguez was arrested last week and has been charged with trans transportation of minors, enticement of a minor, and transfer of obscene material to a minor. The new at 6, a Lubbock man in jail after police say he tried to kidnap a three-year-old. 26-year-old Ricardo Ramirez Jr. arrested last Thursday after a woman called police to an area near 39th and Avenue P. She had been cleaning her car with her three children there when police say Ramirez came up to them and started yelling something about the children. Then he tried to grab the three-year-old. The woman screamed at him to go away, and Ramirez eventually did. She got into her car, drove around the block, saw Ramirez at a nearby motel, and warned other people there about what Ramirez had tried to do. An officer stated in the police report that he believed Ramirez had tried to take the child to either trade for sexual acts or use the child as his own so he could get a place to live. Ramirez is now in jail, charged with aggravated kidnapping. A former Canterbury school teacher accused of possessing child sexual abuse material was arrested on Wednesday after being caught on the run in Miami. 32-year-old Thomas Dean, a former assistant lacrosse coach and teacher, faces 28 counts of child sexual abuse material. According to the Florida Regional Fugitive Task Force, the U.S. Marshals found them using investigative methods along Northeast 83rd Street in Miami and have not provided much more information than that. You know, they don't want to give away their secrets. He was arrested in 2021 to start with and accused of sexually assaulting a teen. And Dean, of course, lost his job, and after that, the state dropped the charges. But according to documents, police say Dean had videos of naked toddlers and young children having sexual encounters with a man, and in some cases, with each other. He was also arrested for allegedly molesting a child he met, using the dating app Grinder, He was accused of later meeting up with him for a sexual interaction. All of those charges were later dropped. During this investigation, detectives discovered a collection of child sexual abuse material on his devices. This included images of sexual activity involving toddlers and small children. After four months behind bars, he was given an ankle monitor and he was released with the promise that he would go to his next court hearing. But of course, he cut it off went on the lamb and never showed up. Well, we got you now, Chomo. Now let's figure out what's going to happen to you. Hey, when I get that information, you'll be sure to find it right here first on the Sex Offender Hit List. Hopefully, see ya, Chomo. Andy, thank you. Community activists are demanding answers from Klein ISD officials after a former teacher in the district and her son are accused of sex trafficking and prostitution. The victims in the case are some of the district's most vulnerable students. Fox 26's Sherman DeSalle continues our coverage for us live from Klein Kane High School tonight. Sherman. Yeah, good evening, Rashi. The messages and emails that we see show claims from a former teacher in this district who says that their own daughter was a victim in this case. And when she reported it to the district a year ago, she says she was asked to leave her position. You left a pimp. You left a sex trafficking pimp of a teacher on campus. Quanell X and Dr. Candace Matthews ask leaders from the Klein ISD and its police department for accountability in the sex trafficking case. After a whistleblower, a former teacher in the district released this document to the public. The individual, who's remaining anonymous, filed a complaint against now former teacher Kedrick Grigsby in February 2023 with the sheriff's office, stating Grigsby was involved in the alleged sex crime with her son, Roger McGee. He was arrested for related crimes a year before the individual claims their daughter was one of the victims and informed the school about what happened. They told her to either resign or be terminated. And she's working now in another district. The district tells Fox 26 those claims are false. And after the February 2023 report, they reached out to HCSO immediately and was told Grigsby was not a suspect. The students in this case, ages 15 to 17, were considered runaways. Investigators say Grigsby would use the gifting of hotels as a way to coerce the minors. This is child sex trafficking. This isn't just a 
prostitution. David Gamboa of Elijah Rising, an organization that combats trafficking here in Houston, says the details in this case are common. Traffickers prey on vulnerability and they can easily blend into society. A lot of times people think the trafficker is going to be male. In this instance, it's a female, it's a teacher, it's someone who's in a trusted place of authority. I think there needs to be an investigation into why it took so long and, you know, we need to take trafficking seriously. So the accused teacher, Kedra Grigsby, was set to appear in probable cause court yesterday and this morning, but that hasn't happened yet. We're told that she's going to be transferred to the same court that her son is appearing in. Her bond is set at $750,000 right now. You can watch all of the coverage on this story on fox26houston.com right now. Reporting from Klein ISD, Sherman DeSalle, Fox 26 News. Andy, thank you. Community activists are demanding answers from Klein ISD officials after a former teacher in the district and her son are accused of sex trafficking and prostitution. The victims in the case are some of the district's most vulnerable students. Fox 26's Sherman DeSalle continues our coverage for us live from Klein Train High School tonight. Sherman. Yeah, good evening, Rashi. The messages and emails that we see show claims from a former teacher in this district who says that their own daughter was a victim in this case. And when she reported it to the district a year ago, she says she was asked to leave her position. You left a pimp. You left a sex trafficking pimp of a teacher on campus. Quanell X and Dr. Candace Matthews ask leaders from the Klein ISD and its police department for accountability in the sex trafficking case after a whistleblower, a former teacher in the district, released this document to the public. The individual, who's remaining anonymous, filed a complaint against now former teacher Kedrick Grigsby in February 2023 with the sheriff's office, stating Grigsby was involved in the alleged sex crime with her son, Roger McGee. He was arrested for related crimes a year before. The individual claims their daughter was one of the victims and informed the school about what happened. They told her to either resign or be terminated. And she's working now in another district. The district tells Fox 26 those claims are false. And after the February 2023 report, they reached out to HCSO immediately and was told Grigsby was not a suspect. The students in this case, ages 15 to 17, were considered runaways. Investigators say Grigsby would use the gifting of hotels as a way to coerce the minors. This is child sex trafficking. This isn't just a prostitution. David Gamboa of Elijah Rising, an organization that combats trafficking here in Houston, says the details in this case are common. Traffickers prey on vulnerability and they can easily blend into society. A lot of times people think the trafficker is going to be male. In this instance, it's a female, it's a teacher, it's someone who's in a trusted place of authority. I think there needs to be an investigation into why it took so long and, you know, we need to take trafficking seriously. So the accused teacher, Kedra Grigsby, was set to appear in probable cause court yesterday and this morning, but that hasn't happened yet. We're told that she's going to be transferred to the same court that her son is appearing in. Her bond is set at $750,000 right now. You can watch all of the coverage on this story on fox26houston.com right now. Reporting from Klein ISD, Sherman DeSalle, Fox 26 News. New at 6, an Indiana man is accused of coming to Toledo to have sexual relations with kids. Peter Clark, there on your screen, is charged with enticement and traveling with intent to engage in illicit sexual conduct. These are federal crimes. The FBI's Toledo Child Exploitation and Human Trafficking Task Force picked him up on April 9th. According to court documents, Clark admitted to having a sexual interest in children for about five years. A Joliet man was jailed in Kendall County on charges of indecent solicitation of a child, grooming, and aggravated battery. This investigation that uh, led into the arrest of Christopher Fabian, a 37-year-old, began last December when the Joliet Police Department was notified of an incident involving this chomo and a 14-year-old girl. In following an extensive investigation, the detectives determined Fabian made unwelcome physical contact with the victim's body on one occasion and had sent inappropriate social media messages and photos to the victim, said Joliet Police Sergeant Dwayne English. Detectives secured a warrant for Fabian's arrest on April 3rd, and uh, Fabian, who had an address listed in the Kendall County portion of Joliet, surrendered himself at the Joliet Police Department. 
Fabian was then taken to the Kendall County Jail, and his next court date is set for April 22nd at the Kendall County Courthouse in Yorkville. Investigation leads to the arrest of a Poplar Bluff man on child pornography charges. 46-year-old Joshua McKnight is accused of possessing and promoting child porn. The Highway Patrol's Division of Drug and Crime Control announced McKnight's arrest following work by members of its Special Victims Unit. Authorities say a search of McKnight's home on April 9th uncovered digital files containing child pornography on electronic devices. He's being held in the Butler County Jail on a $100,000 bond. Statesville Police and the North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation say they've arrested a man for child pornography. Joshua Lane, the man on your screen, is charged with sexually exploiting minors. Investigators say they found more evidence after searching his home. Lane was already out on bond after he was charged with a separate child sex crime back in 2022. His bond is set at $100,000 for the new charges. Now we're going to head up to Washington for this one. After extensive deliberation, a Whitman County jury found uh, guilty a 34-year-old man accused of molesting a teenage boy from Pullman. Juan Trejo Perez was convicted of felony third-degree child molestation Wednesday afternoon. This concluded a three-day jury trial at the Whitman County Superior Court. Perez's claims were exaggerated and misleading during his testimony. Uh, he conveniently showed the victim sexual abuse material on the same day of the molestation. He fixed a lock on his door hours before the incident occurred, and he left the house afterwards and just so happened to end up at the airport trying to leave the country. Trejo Perez will appear in Whitman County Superior Court to be sentenced on May 31st. And uh, let's see, he was arrested last year at uh, the Pullman Moscow Regional Airport where he was trying to flee the country. But uh, this is the second time he's been before a jury. Trejo Perez began a trial in December of 23, and that one ended up in a hung jury with a mistrial. Not this time, Chomo. A local caseworker is accused of taking videos and photos of nude children without their knowledge. And if not for the man's ex-wife coming forward, the DA says he may never have been caught. Shelley Bortz has this story from Uniontown. Police here say Corey Johnson's ex-wife did the right thing when she walked through these doors and turned in her ex after finding videos of naked children. She had found videos of, of two juveniles on her, on, on Mr. Johnson's email account. Fayette County District Attorney Mike Abel says Corey Johnson's ex-wife was looking at emails on an account she used to share with her ex-husband when she stumbled upon something disturbing. The videos show two young girls, ages 4 and 16, getting out of the shower. Abel says Johnson put his cell phone underneath a bathroom door and recorded without their knowledge. As soon as she saw the video, she knew exactly who these two juveniles were and that's why she alerted the police. Abel says when Johnson was interviewed, he admitted to taking the video, but added he didn't know the four-year-old was also in the bathroom and didn't intend to record her. For the past month, Johnson had been working as a caseworker with Twin Pines Family Services, a foster and adoption agency in Hopwood. Anytime we find this out about a person who's working around children, it's, it's extremely worrisome to us, not only because of the conduct that we know about, but what we don't know about. Police say they're working diligently to find out if this video was shared and whether there are more videos and victims out there. There's nothing more important to us than protecting the most vulnerable, which is our children. We reached out to the foster and adoption agency where Johnson worked. While they declined comment, they did say that they fired Johnson immediately when he was arrested. Reporting in Uniontown, Shelley Bortz, KDK TV News. Thanks, Jenna. We're following breaking news in Conway this morning where there's reportedly a search happening right now for a missing teenager. Our Michaela Evans is live at the Langston Baptist Church with the very latest. Michaela, what have you learned so far? Lauren Darion searchers here at the church right behind me say the pastor's 13 year old son Gunner Blair vanished last night. They say Gunner went into the woods right behind the church just before six o'clock. Ori County police are not here right now, but I'm told they did help search earlier in the night. I've also learned Gunner was last seen wearing khaki shorts, a brown t-shirt and a blue jacket. Right now I'm told the pastor is going around handing out flower 
fires and we have called police but are waiting to hear back as soon as we learn more information we'll make sure to keep you updated live in conway michaela evans wmbf news there's a strange story for you not so strange anymore we're all used to policemen right well this one's just a recruit at the ontario police college He's facing several charges after he allegedly posed as a Toronto police officer on social media and lured minors to bars where he'd force them to drink alcohol and sexually assault them. Authorities say that between March 10th of this year and March 31st, this uh, accused chomo was using online apps including OME TV, Snapchat, and some other social media platforms to communicate with minors. Then it's alleged the man would pose as a police officer to gain the victim's trust before meeting with them in person and taking them to local bars while knowing they were not of legal drinking age. Investigators allege that the accused would then per, let's see, purchase alcoholic drinks for the victims and then sexually assault them after they were drunk. He also filmed the minor without their knowledge. Search warrants were executed as part of the investigation and several items, including electronic devices, were seized. Then on April 5th, the police arrested this chomo, and I'll give you his name, this is 31-year-old William Knight of Toronto. He's facing multiple charges, including false representation of a peace officer, and three counts each of sexual interference and sexual assault. Knight's also been charged with various child sexual abuse material offenses. See ya, chomo. We are learning more tonight about a Stockbridge man arrested as part of a child pornography case. Police arrested John Guerin last month. He's been charged with sexual exploitation of a child and transporting child sexually explicit material. FBI agents say Guerin uploaded several child pornography videos to an online service sometime back in April of 2021. They also say he posted sexually explicit photos of a minor to an online chat room in October of that same year. His attorney has declined to comment on the case. Well, here are our top stories on CBS News Colorado. If you see something, say something. That's what the Summit County Sheriff's Office is, is, is encouraging. After arresting Kadir Odom yesterday on multiple counts of child sexual exploitation, the Sheriff's Office began an investigation after a tip from the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. Detectives found additional evidence at Odom's home. They're asking anyone who may think a child is being abused to call the cyber tip line. Now down to Macon, Georgia. The uh, Houston County District Attorney's Office announced that 40-year-old Matthew Delp pleaded guilty to aggravated child molestation. Delp sexually abused a 14-year-old girl in November of 21. The uh, Georgia Bureau of Investigation was able to identify Delp's DNA during their investigation. He was sentenced to 25 years in prison with no chance of parole. And after his release, if he does get out, he will be required to register as a sex offender for the rest of his life. The district attorney's office released a statement on the guilty plea. He said, uh, this is a rare case where we had DNA evidence. We normally don't have DNA in these types of cases. And I'm glad that Mr. Delp took responsibility for his disgusting actions. And I'm grateful that the child can close this chapter of her life. Mr. Delp had no criminal history and was an otherwise upstanding member of the community. This case demonstrates that the perpetrators of sexual abuse on children can be those you least expect. Hello everyone, I hope you have your coffee. It's time for morning briefing. Today we're talking about a small business. This kid's still in high school, but he's game on. It's called Imperial Barbecue. Robbie owns this business. I ate some of his ribs and they were out of this world good. He caters only, no storefront. He, he's still in school. He is remarkable. Call him up, order some ribs, and you won't be disappointed. I guarantee it. But there is somebody who is disappointed. It's Theodore Cruz Jr. I'll call him Teddy. That's right. He's a thief. He's got sticky fingers. Oh, did I tell you he's on sexual offender status and we have to check on him? Because in 1998, 
he had lewd contact with a child under 16 years of age. That wasn't good. Did I tell you he has a history of being a burglar and a thief? Well, we added to his history with more criminal charges because he stole more stuff. Our detectives, who are simply the very best, were game on, so they're checking on this guy with his sex crime status, offender status, and they say to themselves, Self, we see a John Deere tractor here, and we see some other things scattered around. So he violated his sexual offender status. We got a search warrant, and we started searching. What did we find? Two stolen Polaris razors from Highlands County, a stolen UTV from Lakeland Police Jurisdiction, stolen tractor, a GMC pickup truck with a bad VIN. We know that's stolen. We're still working on that. This is just an evil guy with sticky fingers and a bad, bad, bad reputation. He's locked up in jail. So Theodore Cruz Jr. was cruised to the county jail by our detectives. If you have any more thefts or you know anything else about him, let us know. We'd love to add charges. Have a good day. Authorities say a man in Oshkosh has been charged by a federal grand jury for possessing child pornography as a repeat offender. According to a release from the Wisconsin Department of Justice, 27-year-old Dakota DeGroote has been charged for allegedly possessing electronic files containing child pornography. Officials say DeGroote was previously convicted in 2016 by a Winnebago court for possessing child pornography. If convicted of these new offenses, DeGroote could spend up to 20 years in federal prison with a 10 year minimum. Fresno, California, a Selma Unified School District employee, yes, another one, was arrested Wednesday on suspicion of multiple sexual abuse charges involving a child. The school district said the accusation involves inappropriate interactions with a female student. The Selma police say they arrested 26 year old Selena Perez of Selma on Wednesday. She posted bail and bonded out the same day. Perez was booked into the Fresno County Jail on multiple felony charges, including lewd and lascivious acts with a child under the age of 14, sexual battery, arranging a meeting with a minor, and annoying and harassing a child under the age of 16. The Selma Unified School District released the following statement. We've been informed on April 10th that a female campus safety assistant has been accused of having inappropriate interactions with a female student. The employee, who works at our middle school, has been removed from campus by our campus school resource officer, who is a police officer working on school site. Huh. See ya, Chomet. Mounties have arrested four men on serious child pornography charges as they wrap up an investigation into three victims under the age of six. Manitoba RCMP were tipped off by their national colleagues earlier this year and in March executed a trio of warrants arresting the men and removing the kids from their home. Officers found tens of thousands of child porn images. Corporal Gord Olson with the Internet Child Exploitation Unit says it's sadly just a drop in the bucket. Um, is it the, the biggest number that I've ever seen personally? No, but... It is very concerning nonetheless. One image is concerning, never mind the thousands that we're seeing in, in, um, you know, in these investigations. So very concerning and, and unfortunately very prolific in this province. It's happening every day. The four men have been slapped with charges, including possessing, distributing, and making child porn. Olson says RCMP will provide wraparound supports for the victims as they begin to recover. Colorado, a former youth pastor has been arrested for sexually assaulting multiple children over the course of 30 years. In 2023, the Larimer County Sheriff's Office received a sexual assault complaint involving 65-year-old Hippolito Gomez Perdomo. The teenager survivor said the assault happened during the early 2000s when she was a young child. 
Deputies looked into the suspect and found other reports. Gomez Perdomo is facing multiple sexual assault charges on a child, and investigators are concerned there may be other victims. A former lame deer pastor was sentenced Wednesday to 30 years in federal prison for molesting foster children under his care. Dean Allen Smith, 67-year-old, served as the head of Morningstar Baptist Church on the Northern Cheyenne Indian Reservation for just over 20 years until his indictment in U.S. District Court on multiple counts of sex abuse. The foster children staying at his home came from the reservation and the testimony of three of those kids whom he abused led to his conviction late last year. These are strong girls, Assistant U.S. Attorney Brian T. Dake said during his argument for a 360-month sentence for Smith. They're brave girls. They're girls who walked into this courtroom and told you what happened to them at the hands of Mr. Smith. But they're going to live with that pain and anguish for the rest of their lives. Smith testified during his trial he became the pastor at Morningstar Baptist Church despite having no seminary training. And as pastor, he hosted prayer walks, family nights, and sobriety programs at the church. He also allowed children on the reservation to stay at his home. Some were the friends of his own children, and others came to his house when they had nowhere else to stay. I founded Veterans for Child Rescue specifically to expose the truth about child trafficking inside the United States. At 38 to 50 billion dollars a year. It is at an industrial scale. The American populace cannot combat an attack that we are generally uneducated upon. So I found Best for Child Rescue and filmed Contraland specifically to alert the populace to what's really going on. Alfred Kinsey back in the 40s and 50s politic to normalize child rape and now we've got an epidemic. So coming from a covert professional background, I realized exposing the threat, compromising their domestic covert operation was the biggest counter I could do as a civilian now. So I appreciate your support for Vets for Child Rescue. Yes, we do other things like run joint ops with law enforcement to arrest the predators. But exposing the threat is job one. Thanks for your support. New tonight, Bibb County investigators arrested a middle school teacher for allegedly having an inappropriate relationship with a former student. Today, Crimes Against Children investigators arrested Ballard Hudson middle school teacher Charles B. Jackson. They received a report about the alleged relationship and issued warrants for his arrest. They took the 54-year-old into custody on charges of statutory rape and aggravated child molestation. He's being held at the Bibb County Jail without bond. This story was from uh, 2022. I figured I'd give you an update on it. As you can see, uh, he's still here under the sex offender hit list. Well, during his plea hearing, Assistant uh, District Attorney Brianna Foster showed that uh, Jackson here committed the acts at both the school and the local church. The victim had previously been molested by her father, and Jackson took advantage of that because she was vulnerable while in his position of trust to her as a school teacher. Jackson was sentenced to 50 years with the first 25 to be served in prison. Um, I mean, he'll probably do 12 and then get out. Hate to see it, but that's what happens. But uh, he'll be on the Georgia Sex Offender Registry for the rest of his life anyway. Tipping Canoe County, Indiana. Prosecutors are filing charges against a Lafayette man for alleged child exploitation and possession of child sexual abuse material. Investigators received over 50 tips of child sexual abuse material between July and September of last year. The suspect behind those tips was later identified as John Bradley, a 23-year-old, allegedly advertised sexually explicit images and videos of children for sale on Twitter. The Twitter post reportedly had a link to a private telegram chat where the content could be downloaded after payments were made on Cash App. The IP address traced back to a woman who Bradley lived with. 
Detectives reportedly found 240 videos and images of children aged 4 through 13 on Bradley's phone and his computer. What a sick, disgusting individual. See ya, chomo. Three adults are facing charges after police say they discovered a sex crime against a minor. Officers in Statesville say they started a child abuse investigation last month after a 13-month-old baby was brought to the hospital unresponsive. We're told that Christopher Torres, the boyfriend of that child's mother, gave some information that did not match up with the child's injuries. Well, during the investigation, authorities say they learned that Torres was accused of having a sexual relationship with a 15-year-old child. Now he faces 10 counts of statutory sex offense and felony child abuse charges. Burma Pabon and Tiffany Ramon are accused are accused rather of coaching Torres's children to provide false information during the investigation. They face charges for accessory after the fact. Roman bonded out of jail and police are still searching for Pabon. Fortunately, the 13 month old child is out of the hospital, we're told, and is recovering. The Palmyra man has been arrested, accused of physically and sexually abusing a 14-year-old on a weekly basis for over a year. Investigators say they recovered messages between 54-year-old John Aldrich and the victim. Aldrich is facing several child porn charges here, also enticement of a minor. His next court hearing set for April 22nd. Now, if convicted of the federal charge, Aldrich could face 15 years to life in prison. A Texas man has been sentenced to 30 years in prison following a guilty verdict for continuous sexual abuse of an 11-year-old child. The jury in the trial against 21-year-old Anthony Calderon returned a guilty verdict on September 5th of last year, and he's just now been sentenced by the 464th District Court of Hidalgo County on Wednesday. On September 27th of 2019, the Hidalgo County Sheriff's Office was dispatched in reference to the sexual abuse of a child involving Calderon and the 11-year-old. The investigation revealed that Calderon had been sexually abusing the child on a continuous basis. And then throughout the trial, evidence and testimony showed the disturbing manner in which the continuous acts of sexual abuse occurred. Calderon received 20 years on account of indecency with the child by contact and 10 years on account of prohibited sexual conduct. See ya, Chomo. Also in Youngstown, closing arguments are expected this afternoon in the case of a man accused of several sex charges. 53-year-old Robert Tuali is accused of raping a child over a period of several years. The trial started Wednesday following jury selection Tuesday. Tulio has been in jail since he was arrested in 2022. He could face life in prison if convicted. Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay Watson. Thanks for watching the WKBN 27 First News YouTube channel. If you want more video news, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the WKBN 27 First News app for breaking news alerts. New tonight, a Beaumont woman has been sentenced in a child sex trafficking case in Calcasieu Parish. 39-year-old Amber Manning was arrested in 2019 at a local casino. The district attorney's office said today she pleaded guilty to charges including trafficking, pornography involving juveniles, and promoting prostitution. Manning was sentenced to 25 years at hard labor without probation or parole. The South Carolina Attorney General's Office said an upstate man was arrested for charges related to the sexual exploitation of a minor. James Mitchell Wayne McAbbey, a 20-year-old of Cherokee County, is accused of soliciting a person who he thought was a minor for sex and encouraging them to produce child sexual abuse material. Investigators also said McAbee encouraged a minor to engage in prostitution and sent explicit message to a person he thought was a minor. McCabe was arrested on April 8th by the Charleston Police Department. He's being charged with five counts of criminal solicitation of a minor, three counts of sexual exploitation of a minor, two counts of disseminating obscene material to a person under the age of 18, and promoting prostitution of a minor. Rain has been supporting survivors of sexual violence since 1994. 
We have teams dedicated to education, prevention, and response. Improving the criminal justice system. And changing the way America thinks about sexual violence. Our hotline is 100% confidential. It's anonymous, it's safe, and free. Whether you're looking for information or just want someone to listen, we'll be there. Through the media, entertainment industry, and colleges across the country, we're making sure the public understands the reality of sexual violence and asking everyone to join us in the fight to end it. We work with companies, schools, government agencies, and other organizations to develop policies and provide training to create a culture of safety. We're leading the national effort to remove barriers so that survivors receive the justice they deserve. And are helping to pass laws to end sexual assault and make our communities safer. You are not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. Porque siempre voy a atender a tu llamada. Because I'm here to support you with what you need to heal. Because I will work to prevent violence and to create a safer future. Because I share your story. Because we. 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 Because we will fight for you. Because we stand with you. Because with rain, you are not alone. When a child experiences trauma, they can be stripped of their ability to imagine. But imagination, imagination is colors. All the colors. Imagination is freedom and whatever you want it to be. But a child without imagination is not a child at all. Will you help defend our right to imagine?